Please explain us, where exactly are we here? Well, I'm standing in front of our uh, clean room, part of our uh, MEMS foundry, which is part of our MEMS and micro devices uh, uh, department. And uh, here we produce uh, MEMS, another thin film uh, technology. Okay, MEMS, you say. What, what is your definition of a MEM? Well, what? it stands for uh, MEM Microelectromechanical Systems. Okay. Uh, in, in essence, what I always tell at parties and at when my mother asks, uh, or my grandmother, <laughs> I always say it's, it's electronic chips with moving parts. And then they answer you, as long as you have a future, my son. <laughs> <laughs> Within yeah. Philips, uh, we are the engineering, let's say engineering powerhouse, we always say, uh, and we help bring developments or technological developments to, to the market. Almost half of what we do is for external customers. Okay. So. Um, we have a huge range of expertises that can help bring this technology, let's say, to life. You can couple the electric world to other worlds, to the outside world, to mechanical world, to chemical world, which means that um, uh, you can make sensors out of it, you can make um, uh, uh, actuators out of it, and you can even combine the two, eh? sensors and actuators. For example, in the, in the case of uh, ultrasound transducers, eh? they, they are both sensors and actuators. Every car is loaded with, with sensors and actuators. Every, but the real accept, acceptation of, uh, of, um, of MEMS is because of these. Okay. Because of smartphones. They are loaded with, with MEMS. With, without knowing it? Without knowing it, we, you're, all have we, all, we all carry a load of MEMS in our pockets. And, and, and smartphone um, producers are adding more and more and more MEMS. And it's not always because they really thought of all the uses of this one MEMS-based mm -hmm. sensor or actuator in their phone. But nowadays, in the, in the hype of, of big data or data science, it's just gather info with your sensors that are nowadays quite cheaply produced and see what you can get out of it. Because of that acceptation, a lot more markets are adopting MEMS. And you see in this trend of more and more data gathering, uh, a lot of, for example, industries are moving towards continuous monitoring instead of just spot checking. Yeah. Uh, this is also the case, for example, for the medical domain. You see that instead of going to a hospital, being put into a big machine, yeah, yeah. getting a single check. You can wear a machine, a system. Yeah. Uh, and for this, this, obviously, you have to have a production method that leads to uh, larger production volumes. So that, that's in the medical market, the, the, the advances also are towards more continuous monitoring. One of the things I always say is, wouldn't it be nice if these systems that go into your body for measuring or checking you are smaller and smaller. Yeah, and I think sense. everybody would like that. And, and if I can give you an example of what we make here, um, um, th this is a wafer that we produce here. Uh, almost every process here is done on these type of silicon wafers. And actually what you see here is a part of an ultrasound device. Um, and these are also already quite large. Eh? These are almost half a centimeter by half a centimeter. Yeah. Still a bit big to put into yeah. your body. These are quite large. And uh, typically, if you would make these kind of systems, uh, for example, to put on a catheter, um, uh, that type of systems would need to be even smaller. So yeah. we make similar devices that are in the order of magnitude of a millimeter in diameter. Okay. Yeah, that's that already sounds yeah. a lot better yeah. than five yeah. millimeters, of course. Yeah. And, uh, and and these are imaging devices, so okay. ultrasound imaging uh, uh, sensors, so to say. So ultrasound devices. So ultrasound devices. Yeah. Yeah. And can, can you tell a bit more how is this ultrasound produced? Uh, yeah, in, in this case, uh, the 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 let's say the, the traditional way of doing it is by using piezo material, sure. which is vibrating ceramic material. Yeah. I always say a sort of rock that vibrates when you put a, a voltage over it. Um, in this case, we eliminated the piezo material and make use of a vibrating membrane, a drum, okay. almost. Uh, we also put a voltage across it. it, it vibrates, generates a pressure wave, and it senses back the pressure wave that comes back. 
okay. essentially okay sounds very simple but obviously to develop this and to produce this is a, a whole lot, different ballgame. A lot of technology yeah. going yeah. in. in and what you just saw is was a rather big one and we're already made this smaller versions obviously a different concept yeah so this yeah. is one mems device yeah okay and we we have a special process that leads to a mems device that we let's say can fold up it's almost okay. like origami with chips okay yeah i see, I see. and um, this can this you can fold around the tip of a catheter so this yeah. is only like one one and a half millimeters in diameter which is a lot more friendly yeah yeah <laughs> But what you've just shown is a typical um, application for MEMS in, in medical applications. Medical so applications, yeah. you, can, you can do scans yeah. inside of the body yeah, with, for with that. Yeah. Um, you have some more examples, I think. On yeah, this is also medical, but this is more close to what people know of ultrasound. This is a bit okay. larger. This, By the way, this is fresh news. This just came out of this clean room. I think a week ago, okay. we started measuring it. So this is typically something that you would use in a wearable application, slightly larger, but also obviously a larger field of view. And this is typically something you could put into a patch or something that you would wear that would constantly generate images of whatever non body monitoring. parts. Yeah, yeah non-stop yeah. uh, monitoring. So, um, and that is typically something that also this medical field is moving towards. This is very similar to what is now made with piezo material, yeah. but obviously in cement, our capacitive micro machined ultrasound transducers. It's a mouthful, but essentially it's a vibrating drum. Okay. Um, but the way of producing it makes sure that it's a lot cheaper to produce large volumes of it, large numbers of it, which obviously makes it a lot easier to hand out for people to wear. Yeah, you could also, uh, for example, put this on a wound and the ultrasound would see the progression of the healing of the wound without generating an image, just scanning over it, not producing any image, just data, and then it just gives you, for example, a green light, hey, your wound is healed. Medical is a big application, but there are other areas, other yeah. fields. So obviously, um, uh, high-end automotive applications are very much in our uh, field of view, so to say. Uh, uh, there's a lot more sensors and, and also actuators nowadays in cars, and it gets more and more. So every, every container of fluid, every action that you take into your car is sensed and monitored. Yeah. Every flow of air, wherever, in whichever tube in your car is monitored. Um, your tires are monitored, you get a signal when your tires are, are, are running low yeah. um, and it gets more and more. Obviously when cars become autonomous then this yeah. booms yeah. even more. What we see happening is specifically in our clean room because we're, we're focused on uh, the more high-end applications, uh, let's say the medium to high volumes. We're, we are here not looking at, let's say, the next small change on an already running millions of volume mm -hmm. product, we are looking for the next step in high-end sensors and actuators. Sure. Yeah, and that is also where Philips Innovation Services is looking at. When doing a development, when doing engineering, when doing production, always looks at how can we make this reliable, high quality, re repeatable, in, a, in essence, manufacturable.